Welcome. Today is the thirty-second Sunday of Ordinary Time, and it is November. A time for us to remember those who have died. We are on a synodal journey, and Pope Francis has called us to become a listening church. As we celebrate the mystery of God's love today, let us be mindful of this call to listen both to those who are near and those who are far. Those who think like me, and those who are very different to me. Let us take a few moments of silence. To prepare for this celebration, our celebrant is our parish priest, Father Mario Dorado. Let's join in singing our entrance hymn. Greetings of peace and joy to every one of you there, in front of your TV screen, and wherever you are now. As we are celebrating the 32nd Sunday of the ordinary time and being the month of November, as you could see in our altar to uh, this month, our, all the symbols to commemorate All Saints Day, but also to commemorate all our faithful departed. And especially the members of our community who just died uh, uh, since from this November 2020 up to November this 2021, and I would like to special mention that of John uh, Prince Patrick who just died last Sunday, and that of Angela De Souza, and all those members of our community or loved ones who just died in this um, uh, time this month. Let us remember them in this mass. So, as a family and as a community gathered together, let us celebrate in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit, sisters and brothers, let us now acknowledge all our sins and let us ask for God's mercy and for His wonderful forgiveness. 
And we all pray together, I confess to Almighty, Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you. We, we bless, bless you. you. We, we adore, adore you. you. We, we glorify you. you. We give, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For, For you, you alone are the Holy, Holy One, you, you alone are the Lord, you, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep from us all adversity, so that, unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from 1 Kings. In those days, Elijah the prophet went to Zarephath. As he arrived at the entrance of the city, a widow was gathering sticks there. He called out to her, Please bring me a small cup full of water to drink. She left to get it and he called out after her, Please bring along a bit of bread. She answered, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked. There is only a handful of flour in my jar and a little oil in my jug. Just now I was collecting a couple of sticks to go in and prepare something for myself and my son. When we have eaten it, we shall die. Elijah said to her, Do not be afraid. Go and do as you propose. But first make me a little cake and bring it to me. Then you can prepare something for yourself and your son. For the Lord, the God of Israel says, The jar of flour shall not go empty nor the jug of oil run dry until the day when the Lord sends rain upon the earth. She left and did as Elijah had said. She was able to eat for a year, and he and her son as well. The jar of flour did not go empty, nor the jug of oil run dry, as the Lord had foretold through Elijah. The Word of the Lord. Praise the Lord, my soul. The Lord keeps faith forever, secures justice for the oppressed, gives food to the hungry, the Lord sets captives free. Praise the Lord, my soul.
The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord raises up those who were bowed down. The Lord loves the just. The Lord protects strangers. Praise the Lord, my soul. The fatherless and the widow he sustains, but the way of the wicked he thwarts. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, through all generations. Alleluia. Praise the Lord, my soul. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Christ did not enter into a sanctuary made by hands, a copy of the true one, but heaven itself, that he might now appear before God on our behalf. Not that he might offer himself repeatedly as the high priest enters each year into the sanctuary with blood that is not his own. If that were so, he would have had to suffer repeatedly from the foundation of the world. But now, once for all, he has appeared at the end of the ages to take away sins by his sacrifice. Just as it is appointed that human beings die once and after this the judgment, so also Christ offered once to take away the sins of many will appear a second time, not to take away sin, but to bring salvation to those who eagerly await him. The Word of the Lord Please stand for the Gospel Acclamation. Alleluia, Alleluia. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus was teaching in the temple. And a large crowd was listening to him. He said, Beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to have the best seats in the synagogues and places of honor at banquets. They devour widows' houses and for the sake of appearance say long prayers they will receive the greater condemnation. You sat down opposite the treasury and watched the crowd putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which are worth a penny. Then he called his disciples and said to them, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury, for all of them have contributed out of their abundance, but she out of her poverty has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters, all of the readings during this Sunday are challenging us to make our faith the foundation of our generosity or 
that making our act, noble act of sharing ourselves with God and with others as an expression of our faith. We heard from the first reading the story of a poor widow from Sarepath who gave everything or the meager resources that she had to the stranger prophet Elijah who asked her for food. And because the poor widow believed on the power of the word of God transmitted to her by prophet Elijah that if she will uh, feed him, her jar of flour and jug of oil will not run dry or empty. Because he believed in God who cares for her and who cares for, for his people, he shared everything that she had with her, with the prophet Elijah. Then through her generosity, the sharing of all her resources to the prophet, God made a miracle. A miracle that her jar of meal or flour or jug of oil were uh, given much supply or given in abundance that she used for the whole year before the rainy season comes. So this is the kind of generosity that is being founded on her faith to God, who God, the God who cares for herself and cares for his people. So that in the second reading we heard that this kind of giving is done by our Lord Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ was presented to us by the second reading epistle to the Hebrews being the high priest the mediator between God and his people and being the high priest has the high priest has the responsibility and obligation to offer sacrifices in the temple once a year for the atonement of, or expiations of their sins, of the sins of the people and their sins. And the offerings or sacrifices that they usually have were, uh, was a blood of animals. But Jesus Christ, who is the high priest, the mediator between God and man, offered blood, blood not coming from someone else, blood not coming from animals, but his own blood. Because of his love of God, he had freely given his own blood as a form of sacrifice. Because of his love of these people, he had freely given his blood for the remission of sins of the sinful humanity or our sins. So this kind of giving, or total giving of Jesus Christ of himself became the source of our salvation. This is how God is generous to us in the person of our Lord Jesus Christ in order to share with us that fruit of giving to himself to God and to us, no other than the gift of salvation. While in the gospel we heard that one day Jesus Christ went to the temple together with his disciples and he sat down at the back of or opposite of the treasury, observing the people putting in their offerings in the treasury box or the collection box. And when he saw a poor widow giving two copper coins, 
he turned to his disciples, telling them that this poor widow has given more than the others, especially the rich people who gave an excess from their own resources or what they have. He told the two copper coins that the poor widow had given or put in, a, in the treasury compared to the huge amount given by the rich people are nothing or insignificant. But for Jesus Christ, he saw something different because he saw that the poor widow compared to those who are rich, who have given huge amount, but they have given extra or in excess of what they have, while this poor widow had given all what she had. So that he commended to his disciples and he is commending to us that this is the kind of giving that offers life. This is the kind of giving that is founded on faith. This is the kind of giving that is an expression of faith that there is God who gives and who takes care of his people. Brothers and sisters, generosity or our faith is the foundation of genuine generosity. Our act of giving is an expression of faith because of our belief to God, the God who provides or the divine providence. Because when we give, we abandon ourselves to the God who, is, who takes care of his people. And when we give, we also believe in that uh, statement of St. Francis of Assisi, our seraphic father, in his peace prayer, that it is in giving that we receive. So it is in this kind of giving that is founded from our faith that bears us that life of being with God that life of being in heaven. And as a personal note, my brothers and sisters, during my very limited stay here at St. Dominic Paris with Father Mario, I have personally witnessed your overwhelming generosity. Generosity, overwhelming generosity to God because of the spirit of your sense of belongingness and unity as members of this parish community. And I have also personally witnessed your overwhelming generosity to your very conscientious parish priest, Father Mario, in extending your love and support to him. And also, my brothers and sisters, your overwhelming generosity in giving your or sharing yourselves and your resources to this uh, St. Dominic Paris food drive every Saturday during this time of pandemic and while we are in lockdown mood or oh, plenty of uh, goods that you are sharing at the back of the door of the church that is for our brothers and sisters who are in need. So my brothers and sisters, we appreciate very much all your generosity and may God continue rewarding you with hundredfold so that you will enjoy life in abundance with your family and loved ones.
Now let's have our proclamation of faith as we all pray together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate with the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to his, the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. The Lord is a shepherd who knows each one of us by name. So let us offer now our prayers to God, trusting in his personal love for us. For the church, that we might all have listening ears, that our hearts and minds be open to listening to others without prejudice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For international leaders, that they be wise and just in their decisions, acting for the common good, providing food for the hungry, protecting the most vulnerable, and ensuring our planet is well cared for. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are hungry, that the voice of the hungry be heard, that people work cooperatively with compassion to ensure that all people have enough to eat. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, that we take time to remember family and friends who have died, recall the gift of their presence in our lives, and pray that they might have everlasting peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our use of money, that we ensure our use of money is informed by wisdom, enlightened by prudence, and guided by compassion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the doctors, nurses, carers, and all hospital staff, who once again are called to make great personal sacrifices on our behalf to combat the resurgence in the COVID pandemic. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For ourselves, that we will be generous with what we have, 
ready to recognize and help people in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We bow our heads and remember in silence our own personal intentions and the intentions of those who have asked for our prayers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Most gentle Father, you guide us along the right path. Hear our prayers and bless each one of us in the way you know best. May we follow wherever you lead us. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray now, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of His name for the good of His holy church. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that celebrating the mystery of the passion of your Son, we may honor it with loving devotion. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift you up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. So make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Amen. 
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Patrick, and Michael, our bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also, brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all have died in your mercy. Welcome them to light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you to your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Forever and ever. Forever. Alleluia. Forever and never. Amen. Now with the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptations, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Sisters and brothers, behold Jesus, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are the school to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you, Amen. Let us pray. Nourished by the sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy that by the pouring forth of your Spirit, the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. It is really true that God is a generous God. And through our faith, He has given us the opportunity to be generous to other people. So again, thank you for Padre Severino for sharing to us that our generous, generosity is born because of our faith in God and because of the gifts that God has entrusted to us. So sisters and brothers, uh, again, I would like to re reiterate what he has said, that really the people here in St. Dominic and for all of you there in front of your TV screen, thank you for being generous, not only with your possession, but with your time, with your uh, talents, and even with your treasures. And I remember the story that I got from Leo Tolstoy, that there was a rich man who was always giving gifts everywhere, almost every week. And then, one time, there was one beggar who came to him and asked him for gifts, and he ran out of money and goods to be distributed to the two beggars. And so what he did is he took the, the hand of the beggar, stood, he stood him up, kissed his forehead, and he said, my brother, I am so sorry. I have no more gift to give you. But later on, um, when I got, came back, come back here, I will give you something. And you know, the beggar, Look at him with tears in, in his eyes. And he said, there is no need. Because you call me your brother, and then you have kissed my forehead. You did not even give me something. You have given me the best gift, the gift of yourself. My dear brothers and sisters, it is really true that God doesn't want the size of our pocket or the size of our gift, but the size of our heart. That's why today, for my little takeaway, I just would like you to listen to this simple song. The title of this song is Persons Are Gifts. And I have uh, uh, used this song when I was still a young seminarian, uh, young theologians giving retreat to people. And Bensi is going to put these lyrics also there in our screen. Persons. 
sincere gifts of God to me that come all round so differently, some so loosely, others so tightly, but wrappings are not the gift. I am a gift of God to me. Do I accept the gifts I see? I am a person, and for this reason, a wonderful gift of love. Am I a gift to others too, willingly given to you and you? persons we are all gifts so let's have a grand exchange of gifts sisters and brothers during this pandemic i have seen a lot of people giving of themselves, and giving gifts to people. Thank you for your generosity and kindness. And always remember, as what Mother Teresa would say, give till it hurts, but give. Give from the bottom of your heart. And do not worry about the quantity of your gifts, but always remember the quality of gift giving. And remember that St. Dominic Paris is a member of the Western Dindery, so I usually say to people, give your best, do your best, and share your best. And God will supply the rest because we are from the West. And so with that, remember that every day, God give us two important gifts, a choice and a chance. A choice to have a good life and a chance to make it better day by day. Thank you, sisters and brothers, again, for being with us and joining us in this celebration. As we have said that every, this month of November, until the Christ the King, or, or until, I think, per Sunday of Advent, during this all Sundays of, Ad, of November, this, these things that you see there in front of your uh, screen now, in front of our altar, this will be here. And all your uh, prayers, especially for all the souls, uh, the faithful departed, we will be praying for all of them. So remember all these names that you have seen in the introduction of our Mass. But at the same time, that in all our prayers, they are always being remembered. So continue to pray with us, and may the all saints in heaven continue to pray for all the, our faithful departed and for all of us in our pilgrim journey. Please join me to have the prayer during this time of pandemic and the prayer for healing. Lord Jesus Christ, you traveled through towns and villages curing every disease and illness. At your command, the sick were made well. Come to our aid during this time of pandemic that we may experience your healing love. Heal those who are sick with the virus. May they regain their strength. May those who have died from the virus rest in peace and through your mercy rise in glory. Be with the loved ones of those who are sick or have died as they worry and grieve. Protect them from illness and despair. Be with the doctors, nurses, researchers, and all medical professionals who seek to heal and help those affected and who put themselves at risk in the process. May they know your protection and peace. Be with the leaders of all nations. Give them the foresight to act with prudence and charity for the well-being of the people they are called to serve. Stay with us, Lord and grant us your peace. 
Amen. Lord, you invite all who are burdened to come to you. Allow your healing hand to heal me. Touch my soul with your compassion for others. Touch my heart with your courage and infinite love for all. Touch my mind with your wisdom. And may my mouth always proclaim your praise. Teach me to reach out to you in all my needs and help me to lead others to you by my example. Most loving heart of Jesus, bring me health in body and spirit that I may serve you with all my strength. Touch gently this life which you have created now and forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you again and hope to see you again next Sunday. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and proclaim the goodness of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let me turn